Alright, um, welcome back to Panzer Garage. Uh, in this series of videos, you'll, we'll be looking at the uh, Ryfield uh, kit, the 5003 kit, Tiger 1 um, for the 503rd. Um, you'll notice that during the video series, there'll be a standard definition as well as um, high definition. That's because I'm doing a bit of a transition between gear at the moment, and because it's taken like six months to do all of this stuff. Um, some of the earlier footage was uh, done in my old video camera in standard definition, so here's that. Uh, but I also thought I would show you is that the whilst, whilst the build's been going on, you probably would have seen on the channel another advertisement that I've got on there about uh, other tigers that I plan to build. Well, I'm going to add another one into that. I picked this up not too long ago, uh, the King Tiger from Ammo. Um, I'm going to build this probably next. It's a pretty interesting version. It's either the final version of March or a, uh, a uh, planned version for the July 1945. Um, stick around, have a look at it. I'm not going to actually build either version of the kit. I'm going to do a hybrid and I'm going to tell you the reason why. I'm going to go after the plans that they had at the time. Um, but I'm going to tell you why the 105mm gun won't work in this turret, so stick around for that. Uh, I'm also going to be trialling in there their interior colours. The first time uh, that I've used um, um, acrylics in a vehicle, I'm going to try the uh, interior and exterior colours and see how they go and do some weathering on top of those. And I've also got a modulation set for Dunkel Geld, uh, which I'll trial as well. So pretty exciting for that. Stick around uh, for the ammo King Tiger and my reasoning why I'm doing the hybrid. Okay, enjoy the video now for Ryefield. Uh, this is the interior. I'll follow up with the exterior as soon as I finish the build. Thanks for that. See from um, my uh, video collection, I've got um, another Tiger, the Academy Tiger with interior that I put up um, a while back now. Um, I've done a lot more research since then um, and I'd like to uh, update that uh, with a better quality model as well. Um, however, you know, just on the, just on the Academy kit, um, for the price you pay and the time it was produced around mid-1990s, it's actually quite a good kit. Um, you know, it has got, it has got its problems, like all vehicles have got its problems, including this one. Um, but it is, um, f for its period, it was quite good, and I enjoyed actually doing it. Um, but I've done some more research on that since then, um, and, and uh, this Tiger is actually part of um, Adam Mann's um, 75th anniversary uh, Tiger 1 group build. Uh, so duck over to his channel, um, Adam Mann, M-A-N-N, and uh, you'll see him connected to me uh, anyway, I think. So it... Um, um, have a look at some of the other guys' tigers on there, it's great. Uh, what I'm doing though, I've decided to do the Ryefield Tiger 1, um, particularly um, kit number 5003. Um, it's from the 503rd on the Eastern Front in 1943, so quite specific. I haven't decided the turret number yet, um, probably 321, but I'm trying to find um, an X502 unit vehicle that was given to 503, uh, which 321 was, um, that had the angled bin um, on it, and um, as well as S-mines, and, and I haven't been able to find one yet, so if I can't find one with S-mines on it, then I'll, I'll end up doing 321. Much conjecture on the colour scheme, as you'll see on the front here, uh, that you may find online. Um, and, and, and that may come from one of the textbooks that uh, Schneider wrote on, on Tigers, um, Tigers in Combat. Um, mentions in there that the 503rd had a bizarre scheme of, of a very yellowish olive, olive um, colouring, as, to, as opposed to, say, a, a, um, either a base colour of um, dark yellow um, or a base colour of the old scheme of dark uh, grey of um, tank grey with um, yellow over the top of that. So I haven't quite decided which way I'll go yet. Uh, I'm, I'm more inclined to actually be a bit controversial and go for the um, 
the green on dark yellow and, and there's a reason for that uh, and that is that um, around the time that these would have been painted um, they were released in uh, dark yellow which this one was highly likely to be and um, um, field commanders uh, at that particular time had a lot of leeway in how they camouflage their vehicles because the uh, um, the olive and brown arrived as a paste and it was mixed often with fuel or any type of um, um, carrier um, that was allowed to be put onto the vehicle so it's quite reasonable to suggest that the CO of the time or, um, allowed it to be painted to reflect the ground and so I'm not actually overly surprised if the unit uh, was uniquely that in the uh, olive green colour so I haven't 100% decided yet which way to go um, but I will do that. I'm also re-researching um, the interior um, colour scheme which I'll come back to later. Um, a slight adjustment maybe from my Academy um, colours which I used uh, Revell uh, 67 grey green. Um, it may be a bit more bluer and I think the advice at the time from around 2001-2002 was that it was REL7009 and I think there was a misinterpretation that um, REL7009 is actually a grey green colour but I think the actual advice the colour was wrong uh, the, the number of the RAL was wrong so it's kind of led people down a different path um, which is okay research is there to um, to refine things for us uh, but now we think it's a bit more blue colour so I'm doing some work on that with um, uh, David Burden and um, um, hopefully we can come up with some kind of Humrul or Revell uh, colour scheme that um, is closer to what we think it actually is. So stay tuned, I'll, I'll keep you uh, updated in further videos on this. But I'm very excited about this Tiger. Um, I have a few other projects to do. I've got a Nash Horn to finish, uh, a Tausch Panzer to finish, um, a Yug Panther to finish, uh, and down the track a diorama for my Stug, finished Stug that you see online um, to do, which is going to be delayed. Um, but after they are completed, and after this is completed, I've got uh, about another 11 Tigers to do. So pretty much, once those other sort of projects are completed, um, I will be focusing on doing a complete Tiger run of about 11 more Tigers, including King Tigers, um, to complete. So stay tuned to this channel if you like Tiger Tanks. And where possible, I will, mold them, I will um, model them off. Um, actual vehicles from the war if I've got if I can find the photos um, and I'll certainly let you know during each of those builds if they are uh, mo uh, modeled off uh, real vehicles that existed or whether it's just I've built them out of the box based on the box kit so we'll try and do it uh, that way so I'm not going to do a review of this kit and go through all the sprues. There's plenty of those online which you can see, um, but as you can see from the box, it's quite comprehensive. There's a lot of PE uh, involved that come with it. Um, some guys like the tracks. Um, I personally think the tracks are a bit too complicated for me. Well, it's a time issue basically. So I'm sticking to my old uh, through models. They're trusted. Um, I like them. They're a bit more expensive. But I like the effect uh, at the end of the day uh, to be able to do. And um, I've also got the Voyager uh, gun um, as well as the Voyager PE. Having a look through the PE though, there's quite a lot of little tiny detail in there that you see. Um, I'm okay with using PE for these. In fact, I'm going to have to because of um, the way that um, the mud guards, for example, on three, two, one were. I have to kind of uh, use these to be able to create the effect. However, as you know from P, you get a lot of smaller pieces and I'm not overly concerned about using those. So I'm not necessarily going to use the whole thing. Um, my experience has been that the PE, the smaller PE, etc., looks good when the tank is bare, but when you actually paint it um, in a camouflage scheme and, and deliver effects on top of it, if the molded plastic pieces are okay, um, they're fine. 
um, and don't be frustrated or waste your time personal view uh, in doing the really really small stuff it'll only frustrate you uh, and modeling is meant to be enjoyable and plus I actually don't think it adds that, that much value to it I mean if you look at my Academy kit the only thing on there that was um, extra was the um, the rounds um, um, the ammunition rounds um, the gun and the tracks and the um, um, aerials antennas so and that and that's pretty much it the when I use PE, I go for what I call a big ticket item. What's, what's something that's really going to stand out and make it look good? And to me, it's kind of the broad things that you see on here. Uh, the mud guards, um, the gun, uh, things like that that people will really focus on. Aerials, things like that. So that's how I'm going to go and I'll keep you updated as we go through there. I have started so far with some of the uh, um, workings of the turret. Um, as via the instructions, the turret um, is early in the piece, and um, so I've started uh, that build. Um, I would really recommend um, the Voyager gun for this, uh, specifically the Voyager gun that is for the Ryefield 5003 kit. Uh, it's very nice. Uh, fits well. Uh, it actually comes with a resin mantlet, but I compared the two. I, you know, I think the Rifield one is fine, um, and so therefore you're not stuffing around with anything else. Um, this has got to be painted, of course, um, and the interior. There's a lot of uh, ejection holes, unfortunately, with the Rifield. As you can see, uh, well, I haven't sanded these back yet, but um, you get in the bottom of the uh, the. Um, the uh, expelled ammunition holder and um, you know all through the interior of the kit so you need to um, fill those and sand those back but um, on the surface you know to step up from the Academy one which you'd expect for something that's you know 20 odd years later um, so I'm looking forward to, to, to that um, the, and I'll talk you through this sort of as, as we go and what I'm doing and how I've broken it down to paint it. I would recommend breaking it down in stages and painting it, um, particularly the internals, uh, else it's going to get very crowded in there. I haven't decided but I'm going to add some extra wiring yet. Um, I'm using Archer's transfers that will go inside again, Archer's internal interior Tiger transfers. But if you're going to get those, I would recommend getting two sheets or else you'll run out, you won't have enough of specific ones. So I am excited about um, doing this. It's going to be a good build. It's going to be a long build. Um, so please, um, you know, I've got other things that I'm working on. So I've got, um, I'll post up when possible to update you. But the purpose of this is really just to go through the group build for um, for Adams and sort of see, you know, what, what people bring to the party. Where possible, I'll give you some history. Um, I'll give you some color developments and reasons behind that uh, and try and make it um, as accurate color wise as I can. In terms of accuracy of the kit, um, I'm not a rivet counter. I'll do what the kit sort of tells me to do. If I can make some small adjustments, I will, but I'm not going to, um, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, go down the path and I have to make a major adjustments on different things. It's just really not worth it at the end of the day. And, you know, I do this for fun and history. For for me, um, the colour of the vehicle is a bit more fun than working out whether you know there's four bolts in a certain place or two bolts. Some people get off on that, and that's good. It, it's good that those people do that uh, because it actually makes modelling the manufacturer's model stuff more correct. Um, but I'm happy to sort of go with the flow with with, with what's produced. Uh, and try and make it as, as accurate as I can within the context of what, what's what been provided to me. Alrighty, so um, stick with me on this and um, I will update you as I, as I go through. Cheers. Hi, welcome back. Um, we're at the stage now of uh, the final assembly for assemble, uh, final assembly for painting of the undercoat, etc. I thought it'd be easier to break it down into these sections and paint these, than do a, a section 
um, then put them all together after that. It'll just be easier to put the finer details in and any um, um, decals that need to be addressed as well. So here we've got um, this setup here to go. For those that don't know what each part sort of does, um, these are the headsets cases for the microphones, headset microphone cases. That's the ammunition for the flare gun, which is um, over here, 24 rounds. You've got uh, the commander's water bottle there. You've got the spare prisms for the uh, vision slits here. Notice that I've put a little bit of white card across the top uh, because in reality there, there's a holder that goes across those. It's a thin little strip. Um, and you'll see that ironically in the Academy interior one it's correct, but yet like 20 years later um, that's not. Uh, you've got the commander's gas mask, the um, pistol port, the flare gun, uh, gas mask. Um, you've got the um, sockets for the radio headset for the gunner and driver and the battery for emergency firing and you've got uh, the vision slit there. So that's uh, pretty much ready to go. It's quite crowded when it's all sort of reassembled. Um, so I'll, like the other parts, I'll base coat those in an undercoat uh, and then I'll uh, uh, spray it with the um, with the interior colour uh, once I've done there and I'll take you through how I did that but obviously with, with such fine detail I'm going to need to get in there with a bit of a brush perhaps decant some of my uh, undercoat and then um, the same thing when I do the top but it'll be a lot easier because I've glued it straight to plastic it's a lot easier to kind of do it this way I think than do it piece by piece than trying to glue it later over the paint All right. so there's that piece there uh, the next group um, we've got here ready to go uh, that you've got like a luggage bin you can put various things in there like spare maps or anything that the commander kind of wants to sit noting though that this is on the loader side um, you've got a vision slit there you've got uh, drink bottles ammunition pouches drink bottle gas mask um, and uh, the machine gun bipod um, and uh, shoulder brace it kind of sits in there to go on the outside of the vehicle. Uh, fuse box, more uh, vision slits there. In between there is the, where the machine pistol will go. But I'm going to put that on after I've assembled it because uh, I did have it on there originally and I found it hard to assemble um, the structure together unless it's um, in exactly the right spot. So I'm going to leave that and glue that on after I've painted it. So that's that part there. The rest of the interior uh, is here. Um, not much really except for some filling that I've decided to adjust. Uh, they did miss out down here um, where you can see that, that line there. Actually on top of that sits a um, fire extinguisher which they've left out of the kit. So I've had to find one from another kit which I'll come to in a tick. But the rest of it um, is set up here as such. Uh, water jerry cans will go in here. The water jerry cans that they supplied um, really aren't that flash. So if you've got spare ones from perhaps a kit that does do German jerry cans, um, probably best to use those. But note that they are water, uh, the water jerrys. And uh, when I paint them up, I'll, I'll tell you why, because the, the that the colour coding of the water jerrys will need to be done. Alright, so the only part I really needed to adjust here was you'll see a little bit of clear plastic just there. That's going to get painted so it doesn't have to be clear. Um, and I'll explain that when I sort of put it all together later. But that's where some of the commander's binoculars will sit in a little thing there called fern glass which you'll see uh, later. later. Alright, so pretty crowded there and once you sort of put it all together um, it is quite crowded. Um, unlike the academy one you'll see potentially a line across here because this part, this section actually flips up and opens and you can access things underneath the floor ammunition. Um, this, it doesn't give you the option to, to have it open, uh, actually, so whereas the Academy one did. It would have been nice to be able to have it open, um, but you don't really have that flexibility, unfortunately. So there's that part there. Um, 
the fire extinguisher for the turret floor. Um, it's not any fire extinguisher. You need to note the bottom has to have the outline case on it. So you'll notice that you'll get a few different German fire extinguishers and kits. But you kind of need, I don't know if I can zoom in very well on it, but you kind of need to have one that looks like that. Um, with the bottom that is kind of got the holder on the bottom. Alright, and note the top. I don't fortunately, unfortunately have one that's got PE on it. Uh, that would have been better, but I I don't actually have a spare one. Um, but that's the one that you kind of need, and you'll see that as we sort of go through. Um, and I'll talk about the colouring of that later, because funnily enough, fire extinguishers back in those days aren't necessarily red. Alright, so we'll cover that later. So here we have the um, turret uh, roof. Um, and you'll see I've done a little bit of uh, sort of PE on there with um, um, the uh, smoke launches. But underneath, um, we have the internal travel lock. There's the shield for the um, uh, commander. There's the um, um, breathing tubes. That one, that one, and that one. Um, we have the balancer there for the Lotus hatch and that kind of comes down and connects when it's closed and there's a little lock there for the commander's hatch that sort of plugs into there that I've had to sort of adjust with a little bit of plastic. Alright, you have the ventilator here with some wiring. There's more wiring that comes off and goes to the fuse box which I'll try and do later on. That fuse box is this part here. So there's a big cable that runs down here and then goes into the turret floor and there's a whole lot of little cables that go off to various locations there. I'm going to try and see if I can do that. Um, I'll try and I'll explain. If I can pull it off, I will do a little video on it. But I don't have a lot of information on the complete wiring loom. I think that's, there's some guys working on that over in over, overseas at the moment, I believe. But I, I don't have it, but I'll, do what, I'll try and do what I can do. Um, the wiring behind the smoke discharges here on both sides, you can see those, that was from the Voyager kit. Now that wiring actually comes up alongside the bracket into some wiring that goes into a hole that's drilled into the roof there. Alright, so don't forget to um, put those in if you do that. Alright, because this is the, um, I'm doing a particular sort of October 1942 version beyond which is kind of like 321 turret number 321 uh, the ventilator fan external looks like this with your uh, handle running north south in the in the instructions from Ryefield it has it running east west which is not correct it runs north south all right and um, it's not really worthwhile doing a whole lot of PE now I had a look at doing it but I thought this is molded not too bad anyway so I just sort of kept it um, as is um, and again, as I sort of said in the last video, sort of big ticket items of what you can do. All right. Now this is the, one of the unique bins from the 502 unit that uh, was then given to the 503rd, and you'll see the sort of instead of it being straight down, it's got the little curve there. Hence why I've chosen to do you know, three, two, one. And that I used a bit of PE for that just to make it look a bit tidier. Um, although I wish the P was a little bit better, but um, that's kind of where it is. That's Voyager, part of the Voyager kit as well. Um, the rest of it I think you've already seen. Um, there's the gun assembly still. I just added the little front plate, the front um, shield that goes over beneath the uh, vision slits, uh, the binocular vision slits. I haven't added the bin yet because that's going to be painted separately. Uh, the turret. Uh, chose to do the PE handles um, in there and um, I broke it wasn't molded very well so I broke the handle in the kit so I had to use some copper wiring there to, 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 to complete that but otherwise try, um, works out quite well so far uh, so I will um, paint it and then um, get back to you on the next video alrighty thanks for that Welcome back. Here we are up to the next stage. 
While the other, um, while the turret is curing, just up to your, up here, um, I started on the hull, the gearbox, um, engine, etc. for, to get the next stage done. It's a bit of a dilemma because you don't want to kind of put too much in the hull because you've got to paint it and it's dual tone. So from the sponson, this side upwards, is the turret colour, so the sort of the beigey cream colour. And then below the sponsons down here, or through this bottom part of the hull, it's going to be that sort of um, um, green, grey, blue colour um, that I'll come back to uh, in, the, in a later stage of the video. So it's about trying to get the balance right so it doesn't make painting too difficult for you. Uh, so I've decided to take it as far as I can at this stage uh, before I paint it all up and then I'll assemble the various parts. Um, so we'll see how see how that goes. Now in this in this stage here you'll see inside uh, the hull quite a lot of detail um, in here. The instructions are actually for this part of it are, are quite good. Um, if you've got a couple of photos of interior it will sort of uh, help you um, out a little bit um, but you can see all the pedals here this is the driver's side a bit of PE on the back of the on the uh, back of the uh, seat here um, the details are all accurate for what they give you there could be more in there um, but it's not far off uh, to be honest um, and you've got other sort of carriage items, the batteries here which needed a little bit of filling for the holes at the top, um, storage, uh, ammunition storage. The floor kind of sits on top of this so you won't see too much of this. Um, the bracing here, I had to shave a little bit off on this side otherwise it bends in the middle. The pressure from the sides here is a bit too much but that's easily fixed. Just remember to, when you glue it down, you might have to hold it a little while. I didn't put any of the ammo or storage boxes in yet. I'm going to paint them separately and glue them in later. Um, there's some PE sort of holders here. This is where your ammo um, bags will go uh, in there. Um, there's a couple of extra parts which I don't think they've included. A couple of gas masks and that that sit behind here. That, they don't seem to have included them. So each side will have a water bottle and gas mask. Um, so I'm going to get them out of another dragon kit. And as I sort of go through later and work out what parts I need to backfill, I'll um, show you where they um, will go uh, as well. But I've kind of done up to this stage. I'm going to paint this now. Um, you'll see at the bottom here, there's a PE frame that kind of sits all the way through here. A photo of it um, is right here. As you can see in the photo, it's quite busy. Uh, that is a little bit painful to put together. Um, I had to do it in sections. Start with the front section so it braces each other, and then work backwards. But you'll kind of get you kind of get the hint. That's probably the hardest part to to put together the P bracing. Not that you're going to see a lot of it anyway. Um, but some of the items kind of sit on top of it so you kind of need it. Alright so there's uh, the bottom of the hull. Over here we've got uh, the front section where the driver's component is and the gearbox. Alright so this side is detailed quite well in the instructions. This is where the radio operator is going to sit. There's your radio system there. It's actually quite accurate. Um, you could do a little bit more wiring in there if you wanted to because there's wiring, there's a wiring sort of loom there and here that sort of goes down and off to the batteries. Um, Morse code sort of item there. You've got um, the other side though. This side is detailed well but they've forgotten to detail this and this in the instructions. So take a good look at it because that's where it is. You might want to back that white strip there, they've left it off. So again, they're extra um, vision blocks, spare vision blocks. So again, it's got the little holder in across the front, the vision block that sort of sits to, to um, this side, uh, just above the driver. 
Um, and that there is your gear change lever. There's a little gap there which indicates something goes there. Uh, to be honest, I don't know what that is because in the photos that I've got of inside a vehicle, there's nothing there. So I'm not sure, and that actually doesn't exist. So I'm not sure why that is there. Maybe it's for a, another version of their vehicle or something, but um, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing there in the Tiger One for, from my understanding. Um, there's a seam line down here which is kind of the same as the academies which I wish I'd got rid of so I might if I can't make that disappear I might fill that but what I might fill that with is instead of putty which is going to be hard to which is going to be hard to sand down um, I might fill it with some clear white glue um, watered down a little bit or if you've got glass model glass clear type glue put that in there and that should fill it up all right so not not a bad assembly item that that'll just i've already test fitted it um that'll test fit in there no worries at all um the next stage is the rear component which sort of sits in here the rear wall um so i built that i actually built it these two panels whilst I slid this into the vehicle so that that's quite accurate and it should line up when I go, go to glue it all together um, and you'll notice there's some PE on there as well again for ammunition uh, fire suppression system here um, however the, the unlike the Academy one actually the Academy one was quite accurate this doesn't have any of the tubing that comes off so whether I decide to add that on or not would just depend on how hard it's going to let me do it um, but I'll look on my academy one and um, get a view on that but uh, if I if I end up putting it on I'll show you um, but I'm going to paint all this what I learned from the academy one is I glued it in in the academy one uh, and then painted it and it was really hard because from here this corner to this corner, draw an imaginary line across. Below is the bottom colour of the hull, and um, above is the beige sort of colour. So then I've got to put decals on it. So then it was really difficult to do whilst I was glued into the vehicle. So this time I've decided to do the majority of it now, paint it now as it is, and then I'll slip it in. Uh, and then if there's any due to glue, if there's any colour issues, I'll just patch it up then. So something to consider as well. That fire suppression system also doesn't necessarily need to be red, and I'll come on to that uh, later on. The engine. The engine's not too bad put together. I mean, it does miss a lot of piping, and I think when we actually put it together with the radiators and everything and then link it together, I think we're going to find there's some uh, piping missing so some significant important piping um, whereas the academy one for example will have it um, so I'm going to have to try and replicate that somehow um, with some styrene plastic but I'm not going to worry about that until it's all in there and then I know exactly what's missing and then I might do some extra little tube wiring and tube plumbing that, that's you know for, for different things that's in there as well but I don't know exactly what's missing yet so until I sort of put it all together then I'll worry about it then but this colour wise um, you'll see some references when they restored the Tiger in the UK I think they painted it um, the blue grey like the rest of the hull but it'll actually most likely be black and um, these at the top I think for memory are white but I'll go back and have another look but you can't go wrong if it's kind of that blacky color or if you've got an iron black sort of metallic iron black you can't go wrong with that sort of thing with it I think last time I did a an iron black metallic which was a little too metallic but then I put after that and it dried well I put a matte black wash over it and I think it sort of brought the metallic down a little bit so it was enough to sort of make it look pretty good so that's that there um, this is the rear of the vehicle inside inside uh, again you'll need to patch the two holes or the the, the, the two um, ejector pin marks there because you're going to see those 
Um, the rest of the ejector pin marks down here you don't need to get rid of. Um, but I decided, you know, since I'm going to do the whole lot, I'm going to paint the inside of that. Um, there's the front plate, external, interior. You need to assemble that and put that together. Um, and again, I'm going to paint that now uh, and have that ready to go. Uh, and then these are just little extra pieces from the uh, engine bay that kind of sit um, down in there uh, like that. So. Um, they will get sprayed as well and there's the uh, floor part and there's just a couple of other minor pieces so that's where we're at uh, there um, at the moment um, as I sort of indicated before um, the driver's side um, you'll need to remember that if you're going to build it it's not in the instructions also what's not clear on the instructions also is where this piece sits next to the um, sig the signal uh, sort of hull gunner's position so there's the seat, there's the backrest and that's a prism there as well a vision prism that sort of sits up here um, that sort of sits flush right next to that exactly like that okay so I've got some photos of that out of my reference books um, so if it gets dark because the, the picture's not exactly clear that sort of sits there like that Right, so hopefully that's helpful so far. You'll see it again later on when it, you get more colour on it. It'll probably make it a little bit clearer. But that, that's kind of how busy you are at the start. All right, so I'll see you for the next stage after we've painted uh, the bottoms. Okay, uh, welcome back. It's been quite a jump forward in time now, some six months in fact, mainly due to uh, research that was done uh, for the paint colours and uh, for some of the uh, engine areas which I'll explain to you as I, as I go through. Um, what I thought I would do though is use photos instead of video. It'll help you a lot better and will help my explanations um, um, to be more effective I think and uh, if I talk to them rather than try and do a video uh, some of the previous information that you've seen so far may be updated as I go as well uh, photos I think are better the detail will help you for your own tiger plus you'll be able to pause it and uh, have a think about uh, what you want to do for yours uh, plus so I think just seeing undercoated vehicles etc as we go through doesn't really kind of help you it's just a model that's got undercoating on it so that's why I skipped the undercoating and a few other things uh, to show you uh, after the photos I've done of the interior um, I'll give you a quick uh, video run through um, of the completed interior so you can see that as well but I won't be sort of pausing on major areas of that okay so we'll kick on so we'll start with the turret. Here are a series of photos that show the gradual build up of the turret. Note the filling in of the uh, pin marks from the model. Uh, for the transfers I used Archer's Tiger 1 interior transfers. We can see the left side of the turret here. Note the location of the decals. Also the additional vision slots to the left of the left gas mask. Note the addition of the cross strap to hold the vision slots in as they are not included in the kit. On the right side, the ammunition holders and the wiring panel. Note those for later, you'll see the wiring that I've scratch built for those. Note also just the general wear and tear scratching as part of the uh, worn effect. That's the primer underneath. I used Tamiya Red Oxide Spray for that. Next is the hull roof. Note the gun shield on the commander's hatch. They are on early tigers only and they were black. Note also you can see the wiring for the smoke launchers uh, on the side of the turret roof there. Next you'll see the turret machine gun which is a parkerized metal which is black. Next you'll see the inside of the turret taking shape. Note on the floor you can see the areas of the water for the water jerry cans which um, have will have a white cross on them. Also note the fire extinguisher. You can just see it. Note also that it's not red. Uh, they weren't often painted red. Uh, you'll, you can have various colours from copper to steel uh, to painted as if the floor paint colour uh, and you may get a red. Red never really came in until the 50s. Uh, 
also that there's a toolbox right next to the fire extinguisher. That's not in the kit and was built just for some balsa wood and placed in next to it. It's essentially a cleaning kit. Note the colour change areas and the wooden handles between the uh, blue-grey area and the uh, interior buff area. Note the additional assembly work in the commander's traverse gears, linking it all together with the traverse wheel, and note the colours of black. All working components inside the vehicle essentially are black. Next uh, we have the gun. Note the safety switch in red. Uh, you'll also see the uh, machine gun right next to it, again in parkerised black. Uh, and the spring balancer you'll see also there is in black as well. The next few photos uh, is the floor of the turret. Uh, as indicated before, note the, the water jerrys. Uh, interestingly, the internal water jerrys that come with the kit are actually incorrect. Uh, so you'll need to find German um, in water jerrys for the internal. I, I think the external ones are correct from memory. Okay, next photo is of the hull, unweathered and with the firewall fitted. Uh, which we'll come to shortly for an explanation there. Uh, you'll see over the next couple of photos the transmission, uh, the driver's side area um, not completed yet, and the radio equipment um, area before being fitted to the vehicle. Okay, next, note the rear firewall uh, post painting. Uh, more items will be added later as you'll see in the photos, but note the colour change and the decal placement. Also, the auto fire extinguisher there. Uh, note that uh, it's not red also. Suggested, like the other one, suggested colours can be used uh, copper, steel, uh, red if you want to, or just keep it painted the colour as you see there. Note the addition of the cable running along the top and wrapped around the extinguisher and a box hanging off the end of it. This is actually the S-Mine controller. Uh, for those uh, five S mines that are on top of the outside of the vehicle. Uh, this cable and box I uh, scratch built and added on. Now vehicle 321 for the period I am building uh, had them removed but the cable would still have been there. Um, it is un essentially unwound and can be used in the turret by the commander to fire the S mines when required. Uh, the reason it is down there is due to it being fitted later to the vehicle, but all of the electrical uh, positions uh, in the slip joint for the turret uh, had already been used, so therefore they had to come up with an alternative, hence why it's in that location. Uh, note the completed wall painted now. On the turret com uh, you'll see a completed photo. Note the additional wiring on the black panel. Uh, this is the headset and emergency firing panel. The next photo, note uh, how crowded it is in the vehicle, in the turret. Also that the black vertical rod to the rear drives the cupola direction indicator. That's what that's for and that's scratch built and added. Next, note the wiring of the fuse box above and below at the rear. You see a uh, wire straight under which runs down the leg of the uh, to the turret floor but underneath it uh, and it'll move it'll uh, end up in the center of the turret floor uh, underneath which will connect uh, to the lug that you'll see in the in the um, center of the vehicle uh, where the cupola sits uh, in the hull of the vehicle later on. You'll also see another wire to the right uh, next to the gun running alongside inside the turret uh, which actually ends up connecting back to that original headset and emergency firing panel which you saw before. Okay, next we have the uh, rear of the vehicle, the engine and cooling areas. Note the stainless steel colour of the fuel tanks um, and the straps. That hold it down. Uh, the engine is black, uh, kind of like an uh, iron steel black. Um, the radiators, even though you can't see the face of them, are a stainless steel color 
but the fans to the rear there that you can see uh, for the cooling system are a white metal like an aluminium silver or a matte uh, silver color you can't see it yet uh, as it hasn't been painted but the center hub of those fans are a bronze color the armored shields for the fuel tanks are interior blue gray and note that you have to fill some of the uh, pin marks okay the next few photos are of the uh, engine and the engine coolant areas uh, you'll see uh, the rear in the rear engine uh, area before the rear wall uh, of the vehicle is put on note the additional uh, cooling piping and colors of uh, silver or aluminium uh, the extended exhaust uh, you can see them in that rust color in the middle there and uh, part of the cooling system which has started to be constructed in that part of the vehicle also uh, check the top of the radiators note the right side top of the uh, vehicle on the right side of the vehicle is black and the left side is the interior blue gray color this is color coded at the factory the right side is black it's to ensure uh, that the uh, black side ends up on the right side because that's the side where the steam vent is uh, the tiger could only release steam on the right side of the vehicle um, for overheating purposes also uh, note in the photo um, at the bottom of the fan each side has a connection uh, for pipes uh, running through the firewall there uh, those uh, two pieces each side of the wall jutting out are for the fan gearbox which will be on the rear wall uh, I'll need to once you place the rear wall on you'll need to join the gearbox with some rod up uh, to those little pieces jutting out there to uh, ensure that the gearbox uh, is connected you see the cooling photo uh, this is a photo of, of the uh, the cooling system uh, this photo shows the completed modifications uh, for the cooling system made essentially from uh, plastic rod and wire um, you can also use anything that's kind of pliable uh, solder uh, if you can get it thick enough uh, but I found plastic rod reasonably good to uh, work with the white glue you can see there are for the joins and once they dry clear they'll be painted black uh, over the next series of photos just note the weathering using uh, different effects of uh, grime dust and dirt remember this vehicle 321 was at Kursk okay uh, in this photo uh, you'll note some modifications to the cooling extractor fans to the rear there uh, you'll see a cover that's been placed over it compared to the previous uh, photos that cover is out of a dragon kit and is not included in the rifle field kit uh, so you'll need to uh, find one of those and add those in or make it yourself uh, essentially it's a cover that sits over the top of those uh, of the fan casing area and is color coded the same color um, as the internal uh, uh, bottom color of the vehicle the gray green uh, note also you'll see the bronze type color in the center hub of the fan okay now we move to the front of the vehicle You'll see a gradual build-up of the radio man's position over the next series of photos. Note the various colours. Also the gradual build-up in the wiring of the radio and the addition of the headset and the throat mic. You'll see the ammunition pouches and boxes, the cleaning kit and the medical kit at the front there. The throat mic is sitting just under the radio and was scratch built and the headset is sitting next to the ammunition containers and was built from parts of another kit and the wire um, was very thin wire that I extracted from the inside of an old electric guitar. The wiring is accurate to the German Tiger 1 field manual. Note how crowded out of interest the area for the radio man is uh, with all the radio gear, the wiring, the ammunition pouches etc. Uh, how cramped it is and he's got that transmission jammed right in front of him as well next the ammunition stowage area 
Uh, you'll see the AP there at the front uh, in black with the white tip uh, and is stored facing the front. And the HG with the yellow and silver tip is towards the rear and is facing the rear as well. There are two types of shell casing, brass and a steel type that was manufactured due to the shortage of brass. Humbrol Iron Grey, which is uh, Humbrol 92, is actually quite a re uh, accurate to that uh, steel type colour. Note uh, the two types of additional rounds you can see there in the floor. The rare tungsten round, which is the brass and black, and the uh, heat round there, which is uh, black and white. Okay, now we move to the driver's side. Uh, note the various colours of the dials. Above the dials there are the vision slots, a couple of spares. Uh, I paint where the glass would be there. I paint that uh, a darker green and then I put a white glue or a glass paint over the top of that uh, to, to give it the effect of uh, it being glass. Uh, now we move on to the front plate. Note the machine gun there which is parkerised again. Um, the various ammunition pouches uh, and the additional water bottle that I added there which is the correct um, place for it. Um, note on the top left side in your uh, rifle field manual there you'll see uh, in the instructions there's an extra dial on the top left uh, and on mine it's not there. That's because I removed it as it's not part of the original Tiger but a modern device that's used to assist uh, with the Bobbington Tiger. So uh, you should uh, remove that little lug and don't glue the dial on. Next we have um, the bird's eye view, a few photos of the uh, vehicle. And again, uh, before you'll see the uh, ammunition in the underfloor stowage there. Uh, but you'll see opposite that there's a stowage box that's empty. Um, that's not completed at this stage. That's for s luggage um, storage for the crew. Um, I'm just having troubles finding uh, items that will actually fit in there. So I may have to uh, make those myself. Um, but you'll see the ejector pin marks there. Uh, but they will eventually be covered up when I put uh, stowage in. Uh, you'll see the last picture there is uh, post weathering uh, with the radio uh, being completed, the front plate on um, and um, everything pretty much being final except for the stowage. Okay, so now we just have a quick wrap up with a general uh, video overview of the vehicle after these photos and here you'll see the bird's eye view here and you can see the various details in the vehicle the ammunition are pretty obvious um, we can have a look at the rear of the vehicle there the engine bay and you can see uh, the uh, various details uh, in there um, so again, uh, the fans, the fan casing, the bronze in the center, uh, the various cooling piping that's coming in, that's piped in there. That's what I was talking about with the fans gearbox, okay, which sort of sits underneath some of this piping here. And uh, these items here are the gearbox uh, attached to the gearbox and they're the drive shafts that go to each side to drive the fans that you can see there. All right. Um, the piping from the uh, radiators, coolant piping, different colored radio top, the black and the gray green or the blue green. Uh, as we swing it around, you'll see uh, more of the interior and the floor there. Now I talked in one of the photos earlier about the cabling that runs from the turret down underneath the turret floor. It connects into here. Um, there's some wiring that you could put in there to make it join up but it'd make it a little bit too complicated so I didn't do it. Uh, again uh, notice that the stowage area is empty. This area here.
can see the uh, back wall. Again with the uh, the level of detail from the photos. Again, arches transfers were used for that. The ammunition pouch is black with like a field grey sort of greeny olive canvas bag with a lighter colour strap. Now we have at the front of the vehicle. With the right field instructions is what I was talking to you about before. That's where your little lug was removed from, just in there. You'll see that in your kit from right field. And uh, we'll zoom in and have a bit of a look here at the radio area and the front plate. The throat mic, the headset. Okay, so that kind of wraps up the hull area. We'll move quickly on to the turret. Here, and you can see it's quite crowded in there. Little red safety switch. The wiring just underneath the emergency firing panel and the other side. You can see the uh, wiring run down the leg here from the uh, panel at the back here. Alright, so hopefully uh, that's been helpful for you and the photos. Uh, so what I'll do now is just move on to some of the gear that I use, some of the paints uh, and explain it to you uh, uh, with some of the brands that I used. All right. Okay, so you're probably wondering um, what equipment did I use and paints etc did I use for this. So uh, you'll see a couple of photos here of um, some of the items um, that I used. Um, essentially I still use enamels at this stage so it's predominantly uh, Humbrol and Ravel and uh, some of the finishes are um, um, MIG and AK and um, which can be painful because um, the paint needs to cure um, over a longer period of time uh, and then coated with um, a clear coat before the effects or else um, you can uh, end up uh, taking the paint off. Um, I, I do think that enamels end up giving you a better um, product at the end of the day um, but um, they are difficult uh, to use in its entirety. Um, in terms of the colours, Model Master interior buff is what I used uh, for the top colour. Uh, of course the undercoat, the primer was uh, Tamir Spray Red, o Red Oxide. The, the colour in the hull took a while to sort of colour match uh, with some guys on um, some of the Facebook uh, pages uh, in Tiger Tanks and some modelling ones. Uh, so I do thank uh, David uh, Burden for um, helping me uh, to achieve that. Uh, essentially what I ended up settling on was about a 65% Humbrol 144 um, intermediate blue with about 35% uh, slate grey um, as you'll see in the photos there. There's some other options though 
Um, a close match to that is Ravel uh, 79 mixed with um, Humbrol uh, 31 Slate Grey uh, as well. About a third um, about a third 79 I think to about two thirds 31. But um, I, I didn't end up going with that option. I used the 144 uh, 31 Slate Grey mix. Um, you'll see two in there that I use some um, copper wiring for the uh, electrical connector system and cable. Um, for the coolant pipes, I used standard um, various thicknesses of um, um, plastic rod. Um, f for some of their vision slot holders, I used um, uh, the flat rod and um, and um, additional like water bottles and gas masks etc from other kits and um, the jerry cans uh, for the turret floor I um, used from uh, another kit as well to make sure I had the correct ones and not American versions um, so essentially what you see in these photos is basically what I use for the interior um, for the exterior, which is in the part two of the video, um, I'll take you through a bit of the history of the vehicle so you understand the complexity of the colours there because the external for 321 is not a is uh, not easy either. So, uh, look, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video and, um, and uh, see you for uh, part two. Um, I do hope that for those that are building um, German tanks, particularly early Tigers, uh, that this has been very useful to you and will help your uh, modelling journey to be just that little bit easier. If you have any questions, just drop me some those questions in the comments box uh, or jump on my Facebook page, the same name, uh, Panzer Garage, and um, I will get back to you. Thanks very much.